This book is a collection of poems, um, pretty much a lifetime of work. It was very interesting putting it together, um, seeing that I was writing on certain themes from the time before I could write. And so I want to start um, with the first poem that I, that I ever wrote, which is called um, My Plant. I was three. And <laughs> it said everything. I mean, my plant. It does not grow in water. It does not grow in dirt or sand, but in happy children's hands. <laughs> And so poetry is that um, intention and language to get at what really is. And it calls us into a practice of awareness and bearing witness. And it works when the heart keeps opening, the heart as the instrument of thought and understanding. Augury. Suddenly the sky rains gulls. Pelicans, pigeons, crows, ravens, hawks dart through our hands in patterns of flight and wind. The silver threads of elsewhere in their beaks. This is the weaving of invisible shimmering worlds into a single fabric of mind. We call this the augury of the birds. You know, I think I was so, um, I was so taken by your work and, and the poetry. I meant to um, dedicate the, this reading to the Earth Sea Mother that is so desperately wounded. So I come back to that, that, um, that anything that we might offer might bring healing to her on the condition that we learn how not to do her harm. Gulls. A slight movement toward the hard crusts we have gathered in a paper bag incites the gulls from the four directions. The empty sky floods with wings as they land and take off again, land and take off again. These hungry ones fly toward us in an explosion of beauty, not unlike dawn rupturing the dark or sunset smearing its violet golden light across the advent of night. Their beaks are crimson with their desire for the small offerings we bring to provoke their dance. But we never bring enough simple bread with us to satisfy our craving for their presence, for the birds reaching toward the hands we extend to them, tireless in motion and motionless as they hover in the air just by our fingertips that we should be met this way, that our appetite should be rewarded with such grace, the utter glory of it. Thirteen dark moons. Thirteen ringed neck Pigeons appear, each one a dark moon, so visible in daylight with a band of moonstone around its neck and a flurry of light hidden in the underside of a fan of tail feathers that opens in flight and when landing. Such grace. They gather this morning. As soon as the seeds are offered, then they return to the trees to sing the song their ancestors taught them. In the beginning, when all beings partook and drank of beauty as if it were pure water. You know, part of um, writing on behalf of 
the silent and the silenced ones. It, it's a process of really coming to know. And so this poem, Moon in Taurus, um, was an incredible moment for me when I, I crossed over a line with an animal. Moon in Taurus. Across the barbed wire, the bull takes my hand. It is lost in his mouth, deeper, softer, warmer than I dare think. This is what it must be to sink into a large woman, to submit to her ample thighs. I am aware of boundaries. His teeth, used to grass, will not close on me. He wants the salt, wants me to sweat for him. <laughs> I've had to come east to learn this animal, a real, not mythic beast, attended by dozens of heifers who seek me out under the horned full moon. My hands, stained with mulberries, come clean on that great tongue, slapping between my fingers. His tail flits across his back. His sil silken tassel quivers. I have dreamed this animal, but not his gentleness, not that I would herd with him, not that I would wish him to nudge my flanks, his skin slouched over bones, a tent of a beast, not that he would drive me forward, head down, hungry through the night fields. <laughs> The bull has a rep for a reason. <laughs> Do poems have gender or sex? Okay. <laughs> there are poems that both men and women write, and then there are poems that come only from a woman. Also, of course, poems that could only come from a man. Are the poems of a woman as good? The ones of the years of needles? The poem of the desperate thread? I am thinking of needles and bayonets, of how we are entered, fine or hard. So I'm wondering what kind of poem goes to church with a gun in its pocket? I am thinking that a poem is a law. The alms lady sits outside the door. On Friday, the god puts on his woman's dress, paints his lips with rouge, and comes to the Shabbos bed. Oh God, Hermes Aphrodite. Oh Lord, transvestite God. And with white skirts, she comes. The domes of the synagogue are blue breasts, the nipples, our stars. The woman is such a small thing in a poem. She's the little spring flower you notice as you go to war. You say, white narcissus, it's you I'm coming home to, oh dear God. But your road is far away and brick. The woman's poem sits in a basket of bobbins and bread. Her shoulders are narrow, a river could divide them but the man is strong. Give him a lever and his poem lifts the moon from its orbit. She's only the comet, a flash of light. And the Lord, 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 Lord. I read Amakai and his voice comes right into my poem, just like a man, I say. He can't stay out of any hole. <laughs> He's like the poem of the Kochleffel wanting to stir everyone's pot. I'm thinking, maybe it's I.B. Singer who's entered, and why not? They're both lusty men whose words, coxmen and drunkers, crow at every corner as if the air is free. A woman is such a small street and hobbled with cobblestones. The man's poem is a cart with four horses. I nearly wrote corpses. He <laughs> knocks at the door and asks for a room. Is there something to eat? embroidered linen unfolding under his head. It's Shabbos, and the man must come home. When she comes from the sky, the rooster gathers his hens for the prayers of the egg. It's Sunday, the marble is cold. On Monday, the road again, 
bricks and blood. On Tuesday, the blood-stained sheets on the line. On Wednesday, the quarry dust, the flax. On Thursday, God says, this is a poem, this hue and stone, this scaffold, this up and down. On Friday, she turns up her hem. You cannot see a stitch. The little needles go in and out. So fine, so fine.